Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and families. The McAuliffe International School of Drama Department welcomes you to this evening productions of the Brothers Grimm Spectacular Vaughn. One next stay at home t- edition presented by the sixth grade. We've been working hard for the past several weeks and you're now that you're in for a treat tonight. You'll see cannibalistic witches, crazy German children, and bratty blondes. Please keep in mind you can pause and rewind our performance at any time. Should you have any trouble with the video loading, please try refreshing the page. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to the Brothers Grimm Spectacular Fun. Sunday, 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 it's extreme. See monster slaying action as the three-headed pig battles a wolf robot in a bone-crushing cage match of death. They'll huff and they'll puff and they'll kick some iron. Ah! What we are going to do here today? In the battle you've all been waiting for, Snow White versus a sleeping beauty in a, in a mud wrestling death match. Who's the toughest of them all? Okay, stop. We're not doing that. Flames! Flames! You're weirding them out. Fine, but I want you to know you're no longer extreme in my book. No longer extreme. This is the Brothers Grimm Spectaculathon. That's right, and what we're about to and what we're about to do for you today is going to blow your mind. You'll never be the same. Forget your marriage. Forget your children if you haven't already. A little background to begin. The Brothers Grimm were brothers named Grimm. They are dead, but in the period before they died, the Brothers Grimm wrote 209 fairy tales that we know today. They didn't write them. The Brothers Grimm did not write 209 fairy tales that we know today. They were frauds. We should dig up their bodies and spit on their corpses. No, I'm just saying they were collectors of stories. Never mind that last part. And these stories have become extremely popular. We all know them today. Of course, they've all been changed by the mouse to feed their enormous animation empire, which sucks the life out of existence in a death grip of happy, happy songs and talking objects. I can't even speak their name aloud because they're looking for a reason to sue me right now. You'll never take me alive, Imagineers! You know they own Star Wars, too. Ah, they're everywhere! Okay. What we are going to do for you right now is to turn these fairy tales to their original glory. We have assembled the greatest troop of actors the world has ever seen, and... Heck, is my camera on? Yes. Who said that? Am I mute? Our actors are so insanely talented. Mom, how do I move my camera? I'm on the show and I don't know how to get it off. I can't figure this thing out. Oh, here it is. Anyway, in the short time we have, our craft team of actors is going to perform all children nine fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm. That's like three stories per minute. Or a different number if you know math. And we're going to keep the original end of intact. Blood, violence, death, people getting cut open with scissors. And to make things more difficult, we're going to perform them as originally intended, which is that it's all one giant, super mega juicy story. Are you ready? Yes, hold on, I need to go throw up. Well, I don't know when he'll be back. (laughs) So, once upon a time, there was a girl who was raised by wolves and his mother died in childbirth and she was abandoned by her father who could strain stall to gold and make a deal with a series of elves if they would help him make shoes. There's also a talking fox in there somewhere. And she was beautiful. Because no one cares about ugly people. Whoa! Point me to an ugly Disney princess. Snow White. Literally the fairest of them all. Mom, I think, sorry, she's got that whiny voice. Anyway, there was a girl. And she was poor. (laughs) Oh, I am poor. Dirt poor. She couldn't even afford dirt. Dirt for sale, dirt for sale. Hey you, get off the merchandise. (laughs) I shall flood the ground with my tears. 
You're getting your wet. Stop it. If only I could live in a boot or make some deals with elves or find a talking fox. Excuse me, but I couldn't help overhearing your tale of misery and well. Tell you what, I will grant you your heart's desire if you give me one small thing. That sounds like a great bargain. I won't even ask what the small thing is because I'm so trusting. Excellent. I vanish. What a nice lady. Hey there, hot stuff. Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> Are you a prince? Of darkness. Oh, that's clever. Now, I happen to overhear your tale of misery and woe, and I'm here to help. Well, actually, I just... Just sign this one small contract, and you shall conceive a daughter so beautiful. Done. Mwahaha. This is a busy street. Hello there. You're hideous. That's hurtful, but I have a great bargain for... My stomach recoils in horror as you approach. I get that a lot. Do you want to hear my offer or not? Sure, go ahead. You're probably trustworthy and I'm stupid and don't judge people by their appearances. Didn't you just... Anyway, I shall make you rich. Rich, I tell you, beyond your wildest dreams. Really? Because I have some pretty wild dreams. This is really messed up. You seriously need help. I also want a jet fighter with Tom Cruise in it. When he was 23 and not into the weird stuff. He was still into that. He just wasn't advertising. I want a Tom Cruise clone then that I control. I shall make you rich, rich enough to achieve your dreams. And I ask only one small thing. Sounds good. Do you want to know what that small thing is? No, I'm cool. Very well. It was a good day for the girl. She fell in love with the prince. Hey, you're hot. I am hot. Let's get married. Score. She grew very rich. Hey, look, I just tripped over this giant pot of gold. What are the odds? Haha, <laughs> score. And she conceived a child. Whoa, how did that happen? Um, you see, kids, when a prince and a princess love each other very much. Through magic, magic of the devil, and that's where babies come from. Ah, the baby's coming. Dang it, I mean, push or breathe or something. You're not helping. I'm not trying to. I'm going to be over here. The miracle of childbirth. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Focus on your anger. Focus on your anger. Ah! Ah! Yes, yeah, sweet. Throw her here. Give her back. She looks like you a little. Years passed, and she grew into a beautiful teenager, Rapunzel. I want to revise the name Rapunzel. What about Amber? That was the name of your ex-girlfriend. Amber was nice to me. Are you going to wear your hair that way? Shut up. Honey, we're going to have dinner, so wash your hands. You can't tell me what to do. Don't talk to your mother that way. She sold her soul to the devil just to have you. I don't care. I didn't ask to be born. I'm going now. You're not walking out of this house, young lady. I do what I want. You don't know me. I had just enough of this parenting. I'm going golfing. Real winner you chose there, Mom. You don't have a lot of time to be choosy when you fall in love at first sight. And just then, I have returned. Your return is up. You know, I was just in the neighborhood and I was thinking that I forgot something like 18 years ago. And then I was like, oh yeah, I was supposed to get that thing from that girl. And then poof, I was right here at your house. What do you want? Your child. Your child. Mom? What? How many deals did you make? Just three. And I may have promised your hand in marriage to a talking rabbit. What? I was young. I needed the money and the baby and the prince, but mostly just the money and the baby. You see, this is why I'm in therapy. You heard what I said. Which? For the last time, I'm an enchantress. Girl. 
If you can guess my name, I will release you from this bargain. It's Rumpelstiltskin. What? It says right there on your screen. And the little man stomped his feet so hard, they broke through the floor, and when he tried to pull them out, he broke in half. Seriously, this is how I die? I get my foot caught and break in half trying to get out? Yup. <laughs> That's gotta be the stupidest way to die ever! Ah! I'm not cleaning that up. Now that that horrid little man is gone, I will take Rapunzel. Um, excuse me. I'm the devil. How do you do that? The devil. I've got powers. I've got more claim than the stupid little witch. Enchantress. What other witch? That's it. Let's go. Oh, you want some, huh? Mom, let's get out of here. Quiet, honey. I'm watching this. Go devil. Spelling on this. That's a witch spell. Fine. I curse you. You know what? This is stupid. Tell you what, if you sign this contract here, I will let you take Rapunzel. Oh, this seems legit. And I disappear in a clown cloud of rhinestone. Well, come along, Rapunzel. Where are we going? I've got this great tower for you. Run along, dear. But mom, I don't want to go with evil enchantress. Yeah, I didn't want to raise a spoiled brat, but sometimes you don't get what you want unless you make a deal with the devil and some other weird people. See ya. So the enchantress took Rapunzel and locked her in a high tower without any stairs or doors, which seems a lot more reasonable these days. As for the girl and her prince. I'm back from my golf trip, what did I miss? The forces of darkness battled it out for our daughter's soul. Cool, you want to go to Hawaii? Rock on. And they lived happily ever after. But her story isn't even remotely finished. No way, it is finished. But it's also not yet begun. That's great. So let's get back to that girl, Rapunzel's mother. You might be familiar with her mother. Gretel, what are you doing out? Nothing. You seem moody lately, as if something were bothering you. Our next story, Hansel and Gretel, or the original horror movie. I am haunted, Hansel. Ja, I too am haunted. Perhaps we go to the woods where it is dark and scary. Normally, this would be the part of the show where we ask the audience for participation. Obviously, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So we're picking two lucky audience members to stand in front of all you people. Wait, how did my camera turn on? Yeah, me too. Never mind that. Have you been enjoying the show? Uh, sure. I have some constructive criticism about the first scene. Shh, we don't care. Now, audience out there, these two people represent you. They're all your hopes and dreams wrapped together in a cheetah-loving snack bottle. So, what are we supposed to do? Just watch the show like you'd watch a horror movie. Got it. Okay, let's get on with the story. Hansel, I am very... Very? I overheard a wicked stepmother saying she was going to take us into the woods and leave us to be eaten by the wolves. Ja, she does that. I say go into the wolves ourselves. Uh-oh, don't go in there. Okay, let's go. Here we are, and the dark and scary was alone. Not good. So not good. Something's not right. 
You'll just shoot gun. I feel so strange, handsome. What is that? Ah! Looks like a house. It's made out of candy. This isn't suspicious at all. You want to try the door? Don't do it. Don't go in there. Huh. Let's go in there. <gasps> Don't go in there. It's dark in here. Oh, man. Is that your hand? Is that your hand? She's right behind you. Look behind you. Turn around. Turn around. Look behind you. There's a witch behind you. She's right there. She's right there. Are you eating my house? Ah! We told you. We told you, but you didn't listen. Why didn't you listen to us? We said, don't go in there, and you went in. What? You went in. Why? Do we need to stop? No, we're good. Were you eating the house, Anto? Maybe. I was hungry. You should try the floorboards. They're very delicious. I'm so disappointed in today's young people. You think you can build a house out of candy and no one's going to disturb it? But no. Two of you little brats have to come along and start munching on the walls. In my day, we had houses made out of candy and the kids knew enough to leave them alone. I'm going to have to teach you a lesson. Oh, dang it. I knew it. Get out. Get out. Get out of the house. What kind of lesson? No, she just... She's going to eat you. Why are you talking to her? Run! But first, why don't you want some more candy? No, she's just fattening you up. That's all she's doing. So Hansel and Gretel stayed with the witch and ate and ate. Look at her name. It says witch. Why are you trusting her? Why does macaron smell like gravy? Look, she gave me this apple to put in my mouth. Wasn't that nice? Oh, come on. I need some help cleaning out my oven. Oh, heck no. No, don't do it. Oh, I can help. No, no, you idiot. Don't go in there. I don't even know why I have to tell you. Don't go in there. Come along, Hansel. It's Hansel. Oh, right, Hansel. Oh, I can't watch. Uh, oh, hey, I dropped a quarter. Can you pick it up? A quarter? Eat this, witch. Pow, 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 pow. Yeah, woohoo! Yes, yes! You did it. Wait a minute, she ain't dead. This is where they get you. Don't let your guard down. Yes, I'm happy now. No, it isn't. Oh, well, She's coming back. Her camera is still on. Her camera is still on. How about we eat the rest of the house? Good idea. Oh, I see her. I see her. She's right there. She's right behind you again, you idiots. I'm melting. Oh, wait, I'm burning. So he made it, but the horror wasn't over because Hansel found a bag of fairy dust. Greta, do you want to try fairy dust? No, Hansel. It lets you fly. It doesn't let you fly, Hansel. It's just a bag of dust. Here, let me show you. Auntie jumped off a cliff. What? I can fly, maybe. It's up to you, audience. If you clap hard enough, Hansel will live. Come on, people out there. Please, people out there, let me live. Come on. Don't you believe a boy can fly? Come on. Come on, people out there. Please. Ah. <laughs> You didn't clap hard enough. He died. You know I've done this show a lot, and every time the audience clapped hard enough to let him to live, every time, I just don't know what to say. I think it really comes to this guy. Yeah.
Mr. Clayter, yeah, I see you, Clayter. You didn't clap hard enough. Your heart wasn't really into it. How do you face your children, sir? How do you face your students? Don't talk to me. Oh no, Betty does has claimed another young life. He's in a better place now, Gretel, where stupidity can't hurt him anymore. Canada? Sure. Anyway, after Hansel's untimely death, thank you very much, Mr. Claver. Gretel married a wandering woodcutter, and they had a daughter who grew up to make a deal with several supernatural entities who would eventually imprison her daughter in a tower. But there's always a but. One question remains. Where did the witch come from? Ooh, I know. Once upon a time, there was a dwarf. I prefer little person. In fact, two dwarfs. I prefer dwarf. And these dwarfs worked all day in the mines, and they sang their little songs, and then one day they came home to find. What the heck is that thing? She's huge. Get her away from me. She's going to eat me. You see, in those days, most people were cannibals, which explains the witch from before. The first dwarf, though, he will name Sappy, wasn't afraid. Gar, I like ladies. So, a lady, I couldn't help noticing you were in my house. Whoa, this is a children's story. So I'm going to chop you up and eat you. Time out, time out. Put away the heart. What? I'm just doing what my character wants. You do not get to eat Snow White. No, look. I've been doing some character work. Slappy has a hard life. He's been discriminated against for being a dwarf. He works all day in the mines, and he's got, like, the black lung, you know, and he hates the world. He just hates it. He does not. And he wants revenge against the humans who have wronged him, so when this giant lady comes into his house and sleeps in his bed, dinner time! No! We're doing this story as written. No way it comes to house with seven dwarfs. Then she gets poisoned by an apple. Then a prince shows up with her and shows up and falls in love with her because she's unconscious and can't talk back. You know, maybe this fairy tale is a little antiquated. This is a classic. What girl out there does not want to marry? Be a house housemate to seven freaky bearded dudes and then have no choice who she's going to marry. Sometimes the classics are. How do you say bad? Can I go back to being Sleeping Beauty now? She's alive! Get her! I thought you were supposed to be Snow White. Can anyone really tell the difference? Anyway, what I'm saying is that these stories need some spicing up here. And there, a new angle, a new way of putting them together. I don't care anymore. Whatever. I'm sure this dwarf is going to do a better job than me. Go ahead. Take my place. Sounds good. Wait, I didn't. All right, you're going to be dwarf one. All right. Mikey, you're still dwarf two. I'm the new narrator. Am I still Snow White? You whatever you want to be, honey. Call me. So once upon a time, there was this house filled with seven doors, and these doors looked in the mines beneath the surface of the earth, and they swore revenge at the upworlders. First, you upworlders. And one day they came home to find a beautiful girl sleeping in their bed. Hey, look, a giant hottie. She's huge. She's going to eat me. Run for it. Hold on. Dwarf number two. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of being a supporting character. This is my turn. You see, I happen to be quite brilliant, and I know for this a fact that this giant honey is falling under their curse to sleep for a hundred years. I thought that was a Sleeping Beauty story. From my perspective, they all look the same. And the only way for this giant honey to wake up is to receive a kiss from her true love. Me. 
So you're going to kiss her without getting any active consent? What are you doing? Just preparing my police report. Fine. Hey, giant hottie, is it cool if I kiss you to wake you up from your coma? No, dwarf one. I would like that. That was you. Well, how was I supposed to? What if you did an air hug from a six foot distance? Fine. No way. It was love at first sight. Oh, um, you're not what I expected. I'm better, baby. I'm the mighty dwarf sack, and I rescued you from the evil curse that was. I was just tired. I wasn't under a curse. Forcing you to sleep for a hundred years. I miss your love. Um. This is where you break in the song? I don't know the words. That's okay. I wrote them down for you. This says, I cook dinner and clean the house and leave the thinking to my husband. It's the perfect marriage. This is disgusting. I'm a modern woman. Well, you're not going to live happily ever after then. I'm going to tell the story my way. Are y'all going to need me anytime soon? Yes, we are starting over right now. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful girl. You're going to be Snow White this time. About dang time. Yes, I've just been waiting for my chance. Oh yeah, I will rock this. It's my time. It's all coming true, just like I dreamed. You can do this, Mikey. Time for this diamond to shine. Showtime. All right, then. She was the most beautiful girl in the entire kingdom. You know it. But her stepmother was jealous. Snow White. Stepmother. Is that a lid on your face? You'd like that, wouldn't you? I think you might need to tweeze your eyebrows. They're looking puffy. No, they're totally fierce. Moving on. And the wicked stepmother went to her room and gazed into her magic mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Well, it's certainly not you. Meanwhile, Snow White was only becoming more fierce. Work it, work it. And just then, it was her stepmother. I'm afraid it's over for you, Snow White, for I have a lot of money and been through a lot of plastic surgery in Hollywood. I've tucked, sucked, vacuum, and sanded every inch of my body with diamond laser. Um, and I've had most of my tattoos lasered off. Now I'm more beautiful than even you. Unlikely. Begin. Yes, Queen Slay. Enough! Snow White is still the fiercest! Dang it, well how about an apple as a peace offering? How about I take you out with my martial arts skills? Oh, it's on! Not to want to rub, but I'll just the neighborhood looking for a girl in a coma to make out with and whoa, she fight. And it was a glorious battle. Expelleramus! Expelling Amis yourself. No way. A titanic struggle of good and evil, purity versus corruption, until finally. I shall transform myself into a black dragon. Ha ha ha. That was in the Sleeping Beauty movie. I thought we we're doing Sleeping Beauty. No, this is Snow White. Eat this, witch! Ah, I'm melting. Actually, I'm bleeding. Ah! That was so hot. Like somebody else I know? Prince! You're very forward. I'm a modern woman. Come on, let's get married. They all lived happily ever after and avoided traditional gender roles, and the seven little dwarfs cooked for them, cleaned the house, and did all the other junk that Snow White was supposed to do in the story. The end.
That was enlightened. Thank you. But the witch was not dead. It was just a flashback. Stop. Stop it. We're doing this without any Monty Python references. Just but a scratch. I said stop it. Anyway, the witch felt bad and got a house made of candy and decided to eat the children instead. There aren't many career options. But the true secret origin here is of dwarf number two. Which brings us to the most darkest, most disturbing fairy tale ever told. Faithful Johannes. Never heard of it. There's a reason for that. Welcome to Faithful Johannes, the original psychological thriller. Once upon a time, there was a noble servant, Faithful Johannes, who served his king faithfully, as you might glean from his name. Hey everybody, check out my servant, Faithful Johannes. You're too kind, your majesty. He's the best. All of your other servants are garbage. Faithful Johannes would do anything for me. Eat a bug. Do it. Of course, sire. He loves it. All of your other servants are losers. Nobody like Faithful Johannes here. Slap yourself in the face for me. Amazing. Johannes loved his life. This is great. Nothing like eating bugs and slapping myself in the face for my king. But one night, he was visited by a talking raven. Apes, yo, Johannes. Who's that? Come here, I got something to tell you. Are you a talking raven? Yeah, shut up. I got news for you. What is it? There's about to be three attempts on the king's life. You want to stop it? You listen to me. Oh. But you read the word of this? You tell anybody you heard from me, I'll turn you to stone. Don't tell nobody none. Oh, okay. First up is the mad horse, and the king's going to think he's pretty sweet. But if he gets on that horse, the horse is going to fly into the air, and the king's going to fall for about 2,000 feet. Blah. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to take this water bottle and throw it at the horse. But I'm in a fairy tale. I didn't even know we had water bottles. You do now, you understand me? You get that horse of the king's dead meat, and I'll be watching you. Kaka. The next day. Well, my faithful Johannes, let's go for a lovely stroll. Of course, sire. Something the matter? Not at all. I'm fine. Hey, look at that. Oh, hi there. I'm magical. Ah, I'm dying. Tell my friends they're magic. Heck. I didn't like the look of that horse, sire. That was an adorable horse. Why would you do that? Um, stress at home. Sorry. Man, you got problems. Later that night. Yo, Johannes, come here. Ah, uh, stay away from me. I can't do this. Attempt number two is coming tomorrow at the King's Wedding Rehearsal. I don't want to hear it. The King's Wedding Shirt's cursed. If he puts it on, he'll burn to death. I don't believe you. That horse was innocent, and I killed her. I killed her. All you need to do is stop the king from taking the shirt and tear it up in front of him. But remember, don't say nothing to nobody or I'll turn you to stone. How do I know you're telling the truth? You don't. <laughs> Cuckoo! 
Hello friends, it's nice to see all of you mostly recovered from a plague. And I'm here to tell you, I love this big guy. Come here, you big old guy. This is a day of celebration because I love you, honey bear. I love you more, honey bear. Even our nicknames are cute. This is the happiest day of my life and I made a little present for you. I even sewed it myself. Oh, it's... Oh, uh, I hate this shirt. I hate it. Um, what the heck? It's not your color, sire. It's an affront against fashion. Oh, honey bear. I'm never gonna try again. Later that night. I don't want to hear from any talking birds tonight. No, no. Get out. Yeah, Johannes, you did good, kid. Everyone thinks I'm crazy. Tomorrow the queen's gonna die. Stop it. She's gonna be poisoned, and the only way for you to stop is to suck three drops of blood out of the queen's neck. Gross. I'm not a vampire. I don't do it. She'll die. No difference to me, remember? Don't tell nobody none. I'm not doing it. You can't make me. Kaka. Okay, I had enough. I had a rough night remembering that shirt, but I'm feeling a little bit better. But today is not about the terrible trauma of yesterday. Today is about putting a happy face on and and yeah. Oh no. Are you all right, honey bear? Say something. Is there a doctor in the house? Can anyone save the queen's life? Anyone at all? Oh, this is terrible. Someone do something. If only someone could save her. Whoa, what the heck? Thanks, I feel better. Dude, Johannes, explain yourself. Um. That's it. You're sentenced to death for being a jerk. Where's my guillotine? Wait, I always served you faithfully, sire. But there was a talking raven who was threatening me and telling me, Irk! And just then, Johannes turned into a statue. Because when a magic raven says stuff to you, you better listen. Okay, that was mildly traumatic, but not super traumatic. Ten years pass, and every day the king would stare at the statue of Faithful Johannes and sigh. If there was only a way to bring you back, no one eats bugs or slaps himself in the face for me anymore. And just then, a ghostly voice emanated from the statue. Ooh, there is one way to bring me back. What is it? I'll do anything. Take what you love most in the world. That would be my two boys. I love my two boys very much. Daddy loves you. I love you, Papa. You're the best, Daddy. Banish them into the far lands, never to be seen again. Done. Oh, I feel so much better. You're alive. Air hug. And the king and Johannes lived happily ever after. The end. What did I just watch? That's the fairy tale, right there. He banishes his children to bring back his servant? A good servant is really hard to find. You can always make more kids. <sighs> okay, fine. Johannes brings back the kids later because he's got superpowers. And then one of those kids runs away from home, becomes a dwarf, and lives in the mines. Wow, that's messed up. Yep, well, I think we're running out of time. Princess, or the Little Red Riding Hood, or the Devil's Grandmother. You've done the important ones, though.
Uh -huh. What? Aren't you for getting something? Oh. Yeah. All right. One last one. Once upon a time. Thank you. There's a little orphan girl. Oh, I am orphaned. Oh, I am sad. Can we pause here for a second? Oh, how sad I am. Just hold on. What is it? A lot of people are having trouble with their internet service. Oh, the internet service is bad. Apparently nobody paid the bill. Or something. Oh, that reminds me. So nobody can, so nobody can get back on the performance. What? Well, I guess we can skip it then. No, we are not skipping it. How many actors do we even have left? Um, me? Now listen to me, little reject from Nickelodeon. This is my chance to be a star. Got it? There are important people watching, probably. And I'm getting an HBO series out of this. Got it? Well, I... Got it? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, how sad. Life so sad. One thing, I know the right costumes or props or... Make it work, Juliet. Okay, so her mother died and her father remarried. Oh, our mother, where are you, mother? Are you dead? And the woman he married was beautiful of heart. Wait, beautiful of face, but cold of heart. Oh, this new mother of mine is such a witch. Um, she's not actually a witch. I shall now spread these cinders upon myself to keep warm. Ah, they're hot. Ow. So they called her Cinderella. Now Cinderella's stepmother had two daughters, both equally beautiful. I'm sorry, you're wrong. I'm the pretty one. They're quite hideous. It says here they're beautiful too. I think I know my story. Thank you. Oh, they were so mean to me. I shall not cry like I do every night. Just then, her two wicked stepsisters entered. Look what the cat dragged in. Does it smell here or is it just her? Good one, Giselle. I thought you'd like it. Oh, Cinderella, I need to get ready for the ball. What ball? The ball being thrown by Prince Charming, of course. May I attend the ball? And now. You can make us look pretty. Make me look prettier than her. I need charming. I need now. I suppose I'm going to need a lot of makeup. Cinderella dressed both sisters for the ball. Life's so unfair. Why must I live this way? Why, Mama? Why? But just then, her wicked stepmother entered. Why, Cinderella? What seems to be the trouble? I can't go to the ball. I am so sad. There, there, I guess. Thank you. Just then, one of Cinderella's stepsisters, Giselle, entered the door. Mother, aren't you coming? In a moment, dear, run along. Thank you, I will. And just then, from the other side of the room, Cinderella's other wicked stepsister entered. Mother, I need to get going. You do that, witch. What did you just call me? You heard what I said, a witch. Oh, no, you didn't. Girls, please, you're both pretty. You're both going to the ball. You both need to exit right now without saying anything else. And so they left. Now, Cinderella, I'm a fair wicked stepmother, so I'm going to empty an entire dish of lentils into the fireplace, and when you have finished picking them all out, you may go to the ball with us. And with that, she dumped a dish of lentils into the fireplace like she said she was going to do. Oh, the humanity! Oh, God! Why must I always be punished? I mean, it's just a couple of lentils. It doesn't seem that hard to... I will never go. Never. I am cursed. But what's that? What could it be? My fairy? 
It was a swarm of birds. Question. Do I have to put each bird individually, or can it collectively be the birds? I guess it can be a collective group of birds. You have no idea how much that means to me. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Oh, look, birds, they're so beautiful. Come, my little feather friends. Come and pack these lentils out of the fireplace. Back, 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 back. Oh, I am truly blessed. Thank you, birds. Fly, fly to freedom. We're off to the ball. Look, wicked stepmother. I have removed all of the lentils. Really? Well, I am that a kick in the pants. Frankly, I don't think you're good enough to go to the boost ball. Besides, you've got nothing to wear. Too bad. Have to be going now. <laughs> Loser. How can life be so cruel? Why? What's that, my fairy? It was another swarm of birds carrying a dress. Tweet, 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 tweet. What a lovely dress. Thank you, swarm of birds. Tweet, 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 tweet. So who's going to do my hair? Um, what a surprise. It's a fairy godmother. Isn't this her? She surely comes and does her magic thing. No. What? We're going by the original. There's no fairy godmother. Just a lot of birds. Tweet, tweet. Well, I can't do this without a fairy godmother. Who's going to turn the pumpkin into a coach? Will you walk there? What? This is ridiculous. I'm Cinderella. I'm a fairy godmother. And a coachman and a pumpkin and a bunch of mice turned into coachmen. Oh, so there's no mice either. Next thing you know, there won't even be a glass slipper. There is no glass slipper? Well, then I don't even know how the story goes. Maybe I just get beheaded at the end. I just get beheaded at the end? Maybe, I don't know, I haven't run to the end yet. Ah, uh, I quit. Leave meeting, leave meeting, dang it. Well, I guess somebody's not living happily ever after, is she? All right, let's continue with our story. Um, we can't continue. There's no Cinderella. Sure there is. Put on the dress, Juliet. So, Cinderella had a dress, and she felt very pretty. I feel very pretty. Thank you, birds. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Now I shall walk to the ball. And just then, Cinderella's wicked stepmother and two wicked sisters arrived. Cinderella? What are you doing here? We hate you. I have a dress and I'm going to the ball because the birds brought it to me. And it was a wonderful ball, a huge ball, and everyone started dancing. Unfortunately, the wicked stepmother only knew how to do the cha-cha. One stepsister was doing the waltz and the other one was twerking. Do it. Don't you don is Lord Highness, the Prince. Oh, there we're having a nice time, are we? Blimey, who's that? She's gorgeous. My name's not important. Righto, come here, love. Oh, Prince, you're embarrassing me. What's your name, love? I have to leave. It would spoil everything if you knew my name. Just tell him your name. Jeez. No, I could have loved you especially because you are attractive. Isn't she supposed to drop a slipper or something? Cinderella loses a slipper on the third trip to the prince's ball. He keeps throwing more balls, and she keeps freaking out until finally the prince smears pitch on the steps of the palace, and her shoe sticks. Her golden shoe, by the way. Golden shoe? And he comes looking for the foot that fits the golden shoe. Huh, that does sound more comfortable than glass. 
Can we skip that part, please? I'm going to die. Maybe you should put a little effort into this. Why don't you play your own part? You're doing fine, sweetie. I'll just watch. Fine, a little of this, a little of that. <laughs> the prince stops by with a shoe, looking for a girl who fits it. Are you there? Any of you darlings left a shoe? Oh, I did, I did. Let me see that. Hold on a minute. Do you mind if I try this on in the bathroom? I'm shy. Take all the time you like, love. Excellent. And of course, her foot was too big, so she chopped off her big toe. <laughs> Say, you are right in there? If it's fine, I love you. Bangles and mash, let's get married then. Up into me carriage. It, it's nice. Dar. Say, what's all this is? There's blood everywhere. I popped this in on my foot. You chopped off your toe, you did. Out of me care, you! So the wicked stepsister went back home, and the prince returned to find Cinderella's other wicked stepsister. May I please try the shoe in the bathroom so no one can watch what I'm doing? Of course, I'm not all that bright. <laughs> and once she was in the bathroom, her shoe didn't fit her either, so she chopped off her, she she did the only sensible thing and chopped off her heel. Oh sweet bunnies! Ah! All right in there? I'm fine. Ah. See it fits. All right, then let's get married. Jump in my carriage. But as they were riding. Blimey, is that blow on your foot? I can't myself shaving. I have hairy feet, like a habit. You cut off your heel. I did it for you. And so the prince returned to the house for a third time. Hello there. I mean, several of the ladies in this year's house have chopped up body parts to fit in this year's shoe, but I was just wondering if anyone else fit in it. You see, I'm not very smart, but I make up for it by being very persistent. Makes me ideal to run the government. Wait, I will try on the shoe. Oh, thank goodness. It fits. It is you. It is us. And they lived happily ever after. However. I don't think so. Oh, and the wicked stepsisters ran off to the woods where they raised a sweet wolf pup to become a grandma eating psychopath. But. That's just the beginning. Exactly. But your cell service is turned off. Oh, we're all fine. We just wanted to see if you could do it. Well, well, that's not very nice. Uh, what can you do? Well, we're out of time. So to recap, once upon a time, there was an orphan girl who married a prince whose evil stepsisters were brother bothered by some angry birds. Who ran into the woods and found a wolf cub and raised it to kill. Which it did, and dressed in ladies' clothing, but then was killed by a wandering woodcutter. And the girl grew up and married a king.
but was poisoned and almost died. But her son was killed and then resurrected and then turned into a dwarf who saved another princess who beat her evil stepmother in a martial arts duel, which forced her to go into the woods and make a house with candy, where she was killed by another orphan girl and her brother, who grew up to have a daughter who made a deal with a trio of supernatural beings. Whose daughter grew giant hair after she was put into a tower by another witch. Enchantress. And everybody lived happily ever after. See? And.